The Wagner Group, known as Putin's shadow army, pointed guns at Russia and humiliated Putin. Welcome to America Uncovered, I'm Chris Chappell. It's been a whirlwind weekend in Russia. So much of a whirlwind, it'll blow the shirt right off of you. The leader of the Wagner Group led an armed mutiny causing destruction from within that came within hours of Moscow before ending just as suddenly as it began. This came at the worst possible time for Russia. Ukraine is conducting its summer counteroffensive. Russian telegram channels urged everyone to focus their attention on Ukraine as their enemy. But for a little while, it seemed like Russia's worst enemies were Russians themselves. The crisis left everyone confused. It's being described as strange, weird, and unusual. And no one seems to know what to call it. Was it a coup? A rebellion? A civil war? An insurrection? Yes, mainstream media, this is what an insurrection looks like. Notice the guns. Given that the action was all military against military, mutiny is probably the best term to use. After all, the Wagner Group was once known as Putin's shadow army. It's a Russian private military contractor. It's been at the forefront of expanding Russian influence across the world, from Ukraine to Africa and Syria. They're best known for being the group that took Bakhmut in Ukraine. Their leader, Yevgeny Prigozhin, was once known as Putin's chef. Because he owned a catering business that received contracts from the Kremlin and Russian military after Putin became president. That was before he became the leader of a mercenary company. So what on earth happened? Wagner Group forces moved in last Friday to Rostov-on-Don, where the headquarters of Russia's southern military district lies. Clashes briefly erupted between the Wagner Group and the Russian military. But by early Saturday morning, Wagner Group forces took control of the military headquarters. It was a bit hard to miss for those living in the area. Some actually welcomed the group, and others went about their day. You know your country's been through a lot when this is just another day. By all accounts, Putin was furious, although it's a little hard to tell Putin's poker face is legendary. Вооруженные силы и другие государственные органы получили необходимые приказы. Дополнительные меры антитеррористического характера вводятся сейчас в Москве, Московской области, ряде других регионов. Yeah, how dare they stab him in the back? This is Russia. You're supposed to use poison or throw him out a window. Not only are they disloyal, they're unpatriotic. By then, the Wagner Group was bringing heavy equipment, including air defense systems, to Vorozhnish which, by the way, is halfway between Rosovodon and Moscow. This had Russian leaders panicking. Russian security forces cracked down on the Wagner Group center in St. Petersburg. Meanwhile, the Russian military engaged Wagner Group fighters in Vorozhnyech, ordered excavators to dig up highways, and build up defenses in Moscow. Putin tried to destroy the very organization he once championed. But the Wagner Group broke through barricades and descended on Moscow with lightning speed. Man, this Russian Fast and Furious remake is wild. For Ukraine, this all must have come as a surprise, but a welcome one. Uh, but to Ukraine's disappointment, though, all that came to a sudden halt. The Kremlin announced Prigozhin would leave Russia for Belarus with criminal charges dropped. What happened? How did the Wagner Group go from being Putin's shadow army to being his enemy, and why does it look like Putin's letting the group off? I'll explain more after the break. Welcome back. Now, lots of people are saying that what happened last week was an attempted coup. But that's not quite accurate. It's more accurate to call it an armed mutiny, an open rebellion against specific authorities. In this case, that authority was Russia's Ministry of Defense. Wagner Group leader Prigozhin had a lot of beef with Russian military leaders, especially Defense Minister Sergei Shaigu and the Chief of the General Staff Valery Gerasminov. Prigozhin blamed Russian leaders for screwing up Russia's invasion of Ukraine and taking credit for victories. His co-workers messed up and stole credit for his work, so he wanted to go to war over it? I never thought I'd say this, but that Shadow Army leader is super relatable. Prigozhin specifically blasted Russia's defense ministry multiple times over the lack of ammunition and Russian soldiers fleeing from Bakhmut. 
This was despite the fact that the Wagner Group had significant artillery advantage and preferential support. Perhaps this was in response to Russia rationing ammo in preparation for Ukraine's counteroffensive. Rationed ammo. Probably the worst thing Russia has rationed since bread. Although Prigozhin avoided directly criticizing Putin, many believe he did so indirectly. Like that one time when he asked a rhetorical question about a grandfather that some thought referred to Putin. Up until now, Putin has tolerated Prigozhin's criticism, likely because he needed the Wagner Group. But antagonism between the Wagner Group and Russia's military increased even more when Prigozhin alleged that the Russian Defense Ministry laid mines on Wagner Group's exit routes from Bakhmut. Some pro-Russian voices warned that Prigozhin would commit mutiny. Фактически своими заявлениями Пригожин сделал шаг к смуте. Если Пригожин останется во главе Вагнера, смута наступит быстро и радикально. Of course, he thinks they laid mines in front of him. What did they think his reaction to that would be? Gee, thanks. I've always wanted to play surprise minesweeper IRL. Prigozhin denied that he was plotting a coup, saying that his group was not an army and had a very respectful attitude towards Putin. But on Friday, things seemed to turn for the worse. The Wagner Group posted a video of a forest with small fires, broken trees, and a dead body on Telegram. The video alleged that the Russian Defense Ministry launched a missile attack on a Wagner Group camp from behind. There's no way to confirm whether that's true or if the Wagner Group staged it. Man, I haven't seen someone making working conditions this needlessly unsafe since Stockton Rush. Too soon? It was then that Prigozhin declared war on Russia's Ministry of Defense, saying the evil brought by the military leadership of the country must be stopped. They neglect the lives of soldiers. They forgot the word justice, and we will bring it back. Those who destroy today our guys, who destroy tens, tens of thousands of lives of Russian soldiers, will be punished. What? That's ridiculous. The Russian military didn't forget the word justice. They never knew it in the first place. Now, I didn't specifically mention punishing Putin, but Prigozhin went on social media and said that Putin's reason for invading Ukraine was a lie based on petty stories. He argued that the Ministry of Defense deceived the public and Putin about Ukraine attacking Russia with NATO to seek glory and rob Ukraine for greed. According to Prigozhin, this is not a military coup, but a march of justice to punish the Ministry of Defense. Russia's defense ministry denied having attacked Wagner troops, and Russia's federal security agency filed criminal charges for inciting an armed uprising. I'm not sure how intimidating that is, since the Wagner group knows they're rationing ammo. What are they going to do? Bring them in with slingshots? Hey, can you give that rock back to us? We're trying to conserve over here. Top Russian generals begged Wagner to stop the mutiny. But that didn't deter them. And civilians weren't deterred from getting the perfect selfie. Or handing out coffee. Seriously, revolt in Russia is like discount tacos in America. People see it and think, hmm, is it Tuesday already? When he arrived in Rostov, Perosian said he wanted Shaigu and Gerasminov, if not in Rostov, then in Moscow. Maybe he can get them to fight in a cage on the same card as Elon Musk versus Mark Zuckerberg. You put this on a PPV and it'll make enough money to solve the debt of every nation on Earth. The Wagner Group blamed Putin for allowing things to escalate when he could have just deposed of one or two degenerates. It looked like things were going to escalate into an all-out civil war, but in another sudden twist, Prigozhin called off the attack on Moscow and agreed to exile in Belarus without charges pressed against him. So what happened to stop it? I'll tell you after the break. Welcome back. The Wagner Group was willing to go all out against Putin, claiming all of us are ready to die, all 25,000 and then another 25,000. Some predicted the Wagner Group wouldn't succeed. The Institute for the Study of War said that Prigozhin may have wildly miscalculated and called for an armed rebellion, incorrectly thinking that he would have Putin's backing. Putin was definitely angry, but he was surprisingly lenient on the Wagner Group. According to the Kremlin, Belarusian dictator Alexander Lukashenko negotiated a deal under which Prigozhin would travel to Belarus without facing criminal charges in Russia. The deal also entailed that some Wagner Group fighters would sign contracts with the Russian Ministry of Defense and that no Wagner personnel would be charged for their involvement in armed rebellion. The exact specifics aren't available to the public. So why did this happen? 
One of the more likely reasons has to do with military command structures. Prigozhin rejected the Russian Defense Ministry's attempt to rein in his forces by requiring that they sign contracts with the Ministry of Defense by July 1st. He may have felt that this was the only way to maintain the Wagner Group's independence, and his rejection could be the reason the Russian military attacked the Wagner Group, assuming that's what happened. There's still a lot we don't know. It's hard to say if the Kremlin will change up leadership in the Ministry of Defense, which was the Wagner Group's goal. As of this recording, there are reports that Russian Defense Minister Shaigu is under a form of house arrest. But Prigozhin is currently AWOL as well. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken thinks this isn't over. While one analyst told Sky News it may have been orchestrated, saying the wrap-up seems a bit too tidy. This hasn't stopped the war on Ukraine, but the consensus is that this has definitely humiliated Putin, and has likely made him even more paranoid about who he can trust. So, what do you think of the Wagner Group mutiny? Leave your comments below, and remember that we rely mainly on direct support from viewers like you. If you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, all it takes is as little as a dollar per episode over on our crowdfunding website, Patreon. You can also set a monthly limit. Visit patreon.com slash America Uncovered for more. Click the link below. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.